Welcome to Worship with the Sherwood Forest Methodist Circuit. Today we will be continuing with our theme preaching on being called. Last week we looked at God calling us into relationship and we have had two good workshop sessions of conversations, exploring this through looking at the calling of Adam and Eve. We are now into our second week of this series and today we start to explore the calling of Jeremiah, an Old Testament prophet, who was very reluctant to respond to the voice of God calling him. So we gather together in worship to lift our time together in prayer and for the glory of God. Let's worship together. I wonder, have you ever felt like you can't do something? I'd like you to grab a piece of paper and a pencil and I want you to write can on one half of your piece of paper and can't on the other and then have a think, write or draw things that you can do and then things that you can't do. This may take you some time and that's absolutely fine. Once you've done your list, have a chat with those around you about your can't do list. What's on that list? Why is it there? Today, we are thinking about profits. Now, prophets are people God has called to share God's message to people who need it. People who perhaps are making wrong choices, who need to say sorry and ask forgiveness from God. The prophet we're looking at today is called Jeremiah. Now, the difference with Jeremiah is 
when God calls Jeremiah to be a prophet, Jeremiah is only a boy. He's really young. And so he's a little bit nervous and a bit unsure about God asking him to do this job. He feels he doesn't know enough. What would he say? He's really young. He doesn't know very much. Who would take him seriously? He really wasn't keen. But God told him not to worry. God said that he would give him the words to say and that people would take him seriously. They would pay attention. They would listen. But it didn't make it any easier for Jeremiah. Sometimes we can find it hard when we feel like we can't do something or we're not good enough or we don't know enough or we don't have the right skills. Maybe we feel that we are too young or even maybe too old. But the story of Jeremiah reminds us actually God can use anyone anytime, no matter their age, what they know, what they're good at. The question is, when he does, will you say yes? The Lord spoke his word to me, saying, Before I made you in your mother's womb, I chose you. Before you were born, I set you apart for a special work. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Then I said, But Lord God, I don't know how to speak. I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Don't say I am only a boy. You must go everywhere I send you, and you must say everything I tell you to say. Don't be afraid of anyone, because I am with you to protect you, says the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth. He said to me, See, I am putting my words in your mouth. Today I have put you in charge of nations and kingdoms. You will pull up and tear down, destroy and overthrow, build up and plant. The Lord spoke his word to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? I answered, I see a stick of almond wood. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, because I am watching to make sure my words come true. The Lord spoke his word to me again. What do you see? I answered, I see a pot of boiling water tipping over from the north. The Lord said to me, disaster will come from the north and strike all the people who live in this country. In a short time, I will call all of the people in the northern kingdoms, said the Lord. Those kings will come and set up their thrones near the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will attack all the city walls around Jerusalem and all the cities in Judah. And I will announce my judgments against my people because of their evil in turning away from me. They offered sacrifices to other gods and worshipped idols they had made with their own hands. Jeremiah, get ready. Stand up and tell them everything I command you to say. Don't be afraid of the people, or I will give you a good reason to be afraid of them. Today, I am going to make you a strong city, an iron pillar, a bronze wall. You will be able to stand against everyone in the land. Judah's kings, officers, priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they will not defeat you, because I am with you to protect you, says the Lord. Whenever I am asked to describe my own calling to ministry, the word reluctant always comes to mind. But then when you look in the Bible, you will come across many who were called and who responded saying, who me? Why me? Really? How can I? I'm only a child, young of age. Who me? I I can't speak well. Ask someone else. However, when I am asked to describe my calling to follow Jesus, the word reluctance would not be a word I would use. I spent quite a time seeking to know who Jesus was. As a child, I wanted to know more. I just couldn't work out how others in the congregation could have this faith and hope in Jesus, when what I had was a belief in God. Scripture led me to Jesus, but that's a story for another time. So we could look at being called in different ways. One of being called into relationship, which we looked at last week. But this week, I would like to look at God calling us to something specific. 
This could be as small as a nudge to ring someone, to see how they are, to send them a card perhaps or a text message. How do we respond? Do we do it or do we end up getting distracted? I do think that if we don't respond to something like this, God will prompt, prompt someone else perhaps. But we've missed out on the blessings of serving God and serving one another. So there is a similar call into this perhaps, one which we would probably be more aware of if we were in relationship with God, if we were connected through prayer, scripture and worship. I remember someone saying to me some years ago now that they didn't want to get too close to God in case he asked them to do something. I felt sad because they were missing out on the closer relationship to God that he offers each of us. A calling could be to volunteer at a food bank, a charity shop, in a hospice during this time of COVID, you may have felt a nudge from God to volunteer in some way on the front line to serve your neighbourhood. There does seem to have been a good number of people responding to this pandemic by helping others. In our Zoom midweek worship and fellowship this week, I spoke about a lady being called to pray, to pray for direction for the church at Edwinstow, and how, as she shared that call amongst us, one by one we shared how we too had either had a similar feeling or wanted to respond and join in. We'd begun meeting weekly for prayer. That was a definite call to prayer. In the Old Testament, God called individuals to speak for him rather than him speaking to the people directly. We, of course, have that now in Jesus. But in the Old Testament, God called prophets. Jeremiah was one of them. In our reading today, we hear of how this happened. His calling was in a time when the nation had turned away from God. They were worshipping man-made idols. And during his ministry, they had four turbulent decades preceding the fall of Jerusalem in 597 BC. It was a rocky ministry for Jeremiah. I encourage you to have a look some more at his ministry, his visions, how Judah fluctuated from rebelling and submitting to the great powers surrounding them. Jeremiah had a hard message to deliver to them. Today though, let's look at his initial calling. Jeremiah came from a poor village called Anathoth. He wasn't an elder, he wasn't a high and noble priest, he was in the family of an undistinguished priest. One commentary says, he was not a man mighty as Elijah or as eloquent as Isaiah, but he was someone who was timid and held back, conscious of his helplessness, yearning for a sympathy and love. Such was the chosen person through which the word of the Lord came to that corrupt and degenerate age. God has often selected the young of age for posts of prominent service. Think of Samuel and Timothy, Joseph and David, Daniel and John the Baptist. And then think perhaps of John Wesley, who was only 25 when he inaugurated the great system of Methodism. Jeremiah was naturally timid and sensitive. By nature, he seemed cast in too delicate a mould to be able to confront the powers that be in the land at that time. Sometimes God may speak through others to us. Sometimes through scripture. Sometimes through wonders and visions. God initially spoke to Jeremiah and then revealed two visions to him. One of a branch from an almond tree and one of a pot pouring out its boiling water, spilling forth from the north. Both visions meant different things, but, but firstly, God spoke to Jeremiah. It seems like he may have spoken in an audible voice. He told Jeremiah how he had known him since before he was born. In fact, since before he was formed in his mother's womb, God had known him, had set him apart and appointed him to be a prophet. That sounds to be quite a dramatic way of making his divine presence known to Jeremiah. I cannot forget my own initial call to preach, the time when I first heard God speak to me. Now think about what we now know of Jeremiah, that he was young, that he was no one in particular, from a poor and perhaps not well-known village, just an ordinary bloke. Well, I was 30 years old and had two very young children and was working in a tooling company as an accountant and office manager. I had been brought up through the church and had grown in my faith through this time and came into a living relationship with Jesus in my late teens, which I definitely was eager to respond to. Reluctant wasn't a word I would have used then. 
However, family life and my career took over. The small church I belonged to closed and I struggled with two small children to attend a new church because it had become so stressful. And to be honest, my life was taking a different direction. I still believed in Jesus, but probably wasn't anywhere as close as where I should have been. Too many other things going on in my life. But it was the 4th of July 1999 and some American had prophesied that the world was going to end that night. And for some reason I got hooked and really believed it was going to happen. To cut a long story short if I can, I totally believe that was the last night I would be putting my children to bed. I obviously had a bee in my bonnet about it. I eventually decided that if this was going to happen tonight, then I was going to see what the Bible said about the end of the world. I reached for my Bible, I turned to Revelations, and as I read in Revelations that there would be a new heaven and a new earth, that there would be no more death, no more crying, no more pain, I simply prayed, well, if that's what's going to happen, God, bring it on. It was then that I heard the voice of God saying to me, that he wanted me to preach what I had read. There was no doubt about it, even though I'd never heard the voice of God before. I knew it was God speaking to me. It wasn't an audible voice. It was a God speaking to my inner self, my soul. And would you believe it? I struck up a conversation with God. Jeremiah's response was simply, I can't. He said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. My response was, who me? I don't even attend church. God then said again, I want you to preach what you've just read. Now to Jeremiah's response of, I can't, God said, don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. Before Jeremiah could respond, the Lord reached out and touched Jeremiah's mouth and reaffirmed his calling saying that he would put his words in his mouth and he appointed him to such a difficult task ahead. Now for me, after God had repeated his calling to me, I'd begun to set out the very reasons why I couldn't do this. And believe me, I found enough or so I thought. And for me, the conversation went on for some time. Amazing. Who would have thought I would have a conversation with the living divine God? Eventually, I did say that, okay, I would explore this, but only if God provided someone for me to speak to about this. God's reply was similar to that of Jeremiah's. He said he would provide all I needed. This calling in 1999 began quite a lengthy time for me of fluctuating to and fro from this calling. As I said, I was somewhat reluctant and hesitant. I no way felt worthy or able of this call, <clears throat> but I also couldn't deny it. I met with my lovely superintendent minister and together we broke the calling down into steps. The first my task, the first task that I would have would be to find a church family where I could explore this calling some more and my faith. It was to a wonderful home group that I was first led to and then the church congregation. It still took me a long while to eventually speak with the minister and explore this call some more. Oh gosh though, it was such a relief when I eventually took this next step. For if God has truly called you to something, then be warned. I have found that God nags. He persistently calls and calls until it's something that you can no longer push against. I think that for me, God knew it had to be such a dramatic, amazing moment in my life as he probably knew I would take some convincing. He probably knew that I would throw many obstacles in my own path if they weren't already there. But time after time, in many different ways, the obstacles were removed until I could do nothing but respond. It doesn't mean to say my path has been easy. It hasn't at all. It hasn't at all. Many times, like Jeremiah, it's been tough horrible at times and I wonder why on earth am I doing this? At other times it is an amazing, wondrous blessing. God then went on to confirm Jeremiah's calling with two visions, both of which he explained to Jeremiah and finishing with a command and a call to action. God said, get up, prepare for action and assuring him that he would be with him all the way and that despite the battles, God would take care of him. I encourage you to have a look at the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament. Explore God's calling upon his life. 
journey with Jeremiah through the ups and downs of living his calling out. See how God succeeded and how through Jeremiah's weakness and frailty, God made him brave, courageous and persistent in his calling. Is God calling you? Have you heard his voice? What's your response? Or are you shielding away and staying in the shadows so you don't get too close to God? Are you ready for action? Are you prepared? Are you fully clothed in the protection of the Holy Spirit? For God is doing a new thing. God is calling his people. Let's not try and throw obstacles and excuses in our pathway. There are already enough there without us throwing more in the way. My calling started bef much before 1999 when I heard the voice of God. It started way back from my birth when I was dedicated as a baby. My life followed the ups and downs of childhood and youth, but forever seeking out who Jesus was. But it's now 21 years after that date of me first hearing God's voice. And the world did not end, and still God calls. Listen for his voice. For I pray that God will speak up and call his people into action for him, in order for us to bring about the kingdom of God right where we are in our homes, in our neighbourhoods, our places of work, places of education, places of worship and living. God is calling. Amen.
Our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Lord God, all power in heaven and on earth belongs to you. Shield us in times of distress and danger. Protect us from all that is evil and destructive. Renew us and refresh us that we may serve you and that we may proclaim your power and glory. We give you thanks for all who seek to walk in the way of the Lord. We pray for those who teach us the faith by word and by action. We remember those who spent their lives in your service. We pray for all seekers of the faith, for those who do not know or love you, as well as for those who seek contact and long for love. Lord, may your church be open and welcoming to all. We remember all who watch, wait and weep this day. Those who long for freedom and those who mourn because of the restrictions imposed upon them. Bless all who work for peace, liberty and justice. All who seek to feed the hungry and care for the poor. We give thanks for our homes and loved ones. We pray for our community and neighbourhood and for peace and harmony in all our dealings, that we may be aware of the needs around us and of where we can serve. We pray for the world's poor, for all displaced people, refugees and those seeking political asylum, for all who have been, become discouraged or despondent. For those who have lost the will to strive and to live. And Lord, we especially remember the people of Myanmar. We pray for those who are ill at this time. We also pray for all doctors, nurses, ambulance staff and porters who care for the ill. We remember cleaners and care staff especially those working to care for our elderly during this trying time. And we pray for our hospital chaplaincy team, who are also working under extreme stress at the moment. Let us also remember those who have died recently, especially those whose deaths were untimely, those who have died from COVID, and those who have died through accident, violence or disaster. May they rejoice in the fullness of life which is eternal. Go before us, O Lord, and guide us by your continual help, for it is in your name that we pray. Now let us join together in saying the great family prayer in whichever format you feel comfortable with. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
May God bless you as you continue to journey with him. May Jesus, his son, be ever close to you. And may the Holy Spirit continue to call you, equip you and heal you. Amen. Don't forget to join us for our workshop this afternoon at four o'clock or our workshop on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock. Please contact us for the Zoom details. If you'd like to keep up to date with the Sherwood Forest Methodist Circuit, then please click below to subscribe and receive notifications.